Previously, we mentioned about the steps of designing the pre-stressing member. Based on the feasible regions of the magnal diagram, we propose appropriate pre-stressing force acting on the member. This pre-stressing force will be acting through the tendon, which is later being transferred into the pre-stressed concrete member. Therefore, it is also important for us to know the properties of the tendon and its specifications. For the properties of the tendon, for the properties of the tendons, it is important for us to know a few symbols. First is the characteristic strength FPK. This represents the highest strength that can be sustained by the tendon. The second one is FP 0.1K. It represents the U strength of the tendon. And then next is FPD, which is the design stress of the tendon. The relationship between the FP 0.1K is about 85% of FPK. And you know that FPD is about 87% of FP 0.1K. Normally, the specifications of the tendons are given by their manufacturer. And normally, the FPK and FP 0.1Ks are given. These are the specifications given by BS. There are two common types of the strength, which are 7-wire standard strength and 7-wire super strength. Their nominal diameters are listed here, which vary slightly. The areas of these strengths are given also, and their FPKs are listed here. Normally, standard strength has a lower FPK than the super strength. Next thing you need to know is the stressing method and the checking process. For pre-stressed concrete element, the tendons are being stressed by using the hydraulic jack during the checking operations. The tendons are being pulled by the hydraulic jack to their intended force before being anchored to the element. Therefore, in order to prevent the tendon from breaking during the stressing operations, there will be a maximum permittable jacking force. The failure of the tendon during jacking can be very dangerous as it can cause injury and fatal incidents if not properly done. To be safe, we limit the maximum stress in the tendon during jacking. Normally, we do not use up to 100% of its ultimate capacity. Neither we will use up 100% of its yield strength. If quantified by the ultimate capacity, our intention is to use up only 80% of the ultimate capacity. If we refer to the yield strength, you are only allowed to jack up to 90% of the U strength. The maximum stress in the tendon will be the smaller of the two. Normally, the manufacturer will provide you the FPK and FP0.1K. You just need to substitute into the equations and determine the maximum stress that allowable. Multiply with the cross-sectional area, you will know the maximum permittable jacking force. In the case that you only have the ultimate capacity of the tendon, its U strength is estimated to be around 0.85 FPK. This FP 0.1K will be multiplied with 0.9 and you are able to determine the permittable jacking force. Sometimes, the P that you obtain from the magnal diagram is relatively larger than the 
permittable jacking force, you may increase the numbers of tendon so that the maximum permittable jacking force is not exceeded. It will be depending on the number of strength and X positions, the eccentricity may alter. You can use the centroid of the eccentricity of the group of tendon and determine the stressing force based on the feasible regions of the magnal diagram.